And all these late round picks that we're throwing dart throws at are going to hit for our fantasy teams. But we're never going to cash in on a lottery ticket if we never shoot our shot. One lottery ticket we're looking at today is Jalen Polk, wide receiver for the New England Patriots. Drafted in the second round. Has a lot of upside to his game. Plays well. Been looking good in training camp, preseason, and in minicamp and OTAs. And is looking good. We're going to deep dive his advanced metrics. Look at his situation to see whether or not you need him for fantasy football. But before we dig in, you need to click that subscribe button though. You need to click that thing right now because we're talking about the waiver wire every single day when the season starts from the top to the bottom. Doing deep dives like this on your favorite waiver wire gets. Those guys who are climbing the depth chart, those guys who are falling the depth chart. We deep dive those guys. We use these videos to help you set your lineups. Click that button. Stop missing out. But Jalen Polk's been working with the first team. He's getting opportunity. He can play all the positions. We knew this going in. He just had to show this to us. He's doing it now. He looked good in preseason. We looked at him in training camp. Been looking good. Looking good at mini camp, OTAs, rookie camp. He has been doing what he needed to do with the Patriots this offseason. And he's cashing in. And we look at him all the way back to college. Was not a heavily recruited wide receiver, but he built himself up over time. Had a big year in 2023, 1,100 yards and 9 touchdowns, 2.42 yards per route ran. But the average depth of target of 14.5 yards in the years prior, 15 yards or more, that is huge because that indicates that he can be a deep ball machine. Well, we know this from watching the tape back at Washington over the years. That he can get downfield, he can get it, good ball skills, which means whenever the quarterback, Brissett, Drake May, whoever's back there, wants to sling it deep, they're going to be looking his way. And that means if he brings in one of those passes in any given Sunday, that's a potential big play moment that can account for a lot of fancy points. However, when you look at his production portfolio, I know we got injuries and a transfer in there. Late breakout, 21 years old. Usually you want to be 20 or earlier when it comes to breakout age. But again, when we look at breakout age, it's more of a prerequisite, not a concrete thing. Most of the wide receivers who broke out at the NFL level, your typical wide receiver ones and top tier wide receiver twos, they broke out age 18, 19, and 20. There's a lot of guys that bust in those age ranges as well and breakout range. And then on top of that, 21, 22, most of them bust, but we do get some hitters from that range as well. And we're looking at market share of the passing offense. So last year, age 21, he had a 22.9% share of Washington's passing production, ownership of the passing total. And that's pretty huge considering he was sharing with Romo Dunze and Jalen McMillan, who's been blowing it up with Tampa Bay in training camp as well. And Jalen Polk demonstrated some good things on the field all throughout his time in Washington. Ability to get the deep ball, ability to get downfield, ability to show good ball skills, something to look at. And then when we got to the NFL draft, he got selected in the top part of the second round, top 60 pick which means the odds are going to be in his favor because he's going to be getting opportunities. He's going to be getting opportunities with the Patriots to prove himself. Guys draft on day three, especially late day three, they're not going to get many opportunities to prove themselves or many opportunities to even fail. But Jalen Polk's going to get all that. He's going to get his time to show up in practice and prove who he is to these coaches and everybody else on the field. And if he shows up, plays well, that turns into game time, shows up, plays well there. That shows up to production time. And looks like we're going to get to that point this season. Somewhere down the line from what we're seeing from preseason. And we just look at this offense. It's very ambiguous at wide receiver. Pop Douglas looks good, but not productive. Not a deep ball threat. Kendrick Bourne owned a 20% mark share of the team's passing production. However, going to start off on the pup. We got Tyquan Thornton. We got KJ Osborne, who's got a lot of upside. However, Jalen Polk has the upside to become a huge factor in this offense. I want to say this right now. We love Javon Baker. Let me know if you want a video on Javon Baker. I want to hear that in the comments. If I get five comments on that, I will have a Javon Baker video up tomorrow, the next day, whenever I get those five comments. But PFF says 
Jalen Polk's going off. Eight catches on eight catchable targets. That's what he looks like. That's what he looks like in camp as well. Very shifty too right off the break. He's quick, fast, good. Route runner, very cerebral. You look at this offense. It's very spread out. Pop Douglas looked good last year. 17% target share. Average depth of target though, 8.3. Jalen Polk's a different game. He's a different animal. He's going to get downfield. He's very electric. Some balls going to the tight end. You saw some balls going to Zeke. That's going somewhere else. Kendrick Bourne isn't going to start the season. Maybe he'll be back later. Owned a 20% target share. Might be a stash for the IR if you want to think that way. But again, this is a very ambiguous depth chart. And this is a depth chart where a rookie wide receiver can rise the ranks rather quickly throughout the season and get some opportunity. And when you look at his metrics here, it looks like he has a chance to do so. And you're looking at this offense. It was one of the slowest offenses last year in terms of plays ran. But you look at the quarterback play, and you look at the quarterbacks that's going to be mixed in here, it's going to change. It's going to look different. You can't use last year's stats to predict this, but you're going to just have to watch the depth chart and see where the ball's flowing. Drake May likes to throw the deep ball. He's accurate downfield. He will be in somewhere down the line this year, probably midway through the year, and Jalen Polk's probably going to be there too. And that's just going to be a good pair. He's got a rapport with Jalen Polk because we saw this we noted this during rookie camp OTAs mini camp when they were playing together Drake May would just go to them hang out with them throughout practice one they started off as rookies but still those are some top tier talents that he's working with him and Javon Baker and drafters over at underdog fantasy are putting money on him as a late round get he's rising the ranks or rose the ranks to the 11th round he was 12th 13th round about a couple weeks ago he's up to the 11th round right now getting drafted ahead of austin eckler he's ahead of mike williams ahead of brandon cooks ahead of michael wilson ahead of jalen wright one of those top handcuff running backs right around that rashid shaheed dontavian wicks range where a lot of people are getting their wide receivers before they start slamming running back. The thing about him, if you look at him compared to like a Brian Thomas or like a Romo Dunze or like a Xavier Worthy or Ladd McConkey, those wide receivers in the middle rounds there, he's got upside. It might not be the same potential, but he's got a lot of potential. He's a rookie wide receiver with good draft capital, but he's a good bit cheaper. He's climbing up the board, which is saying the market's hot on him. And he's a bit cheaper. You can even get one of those wide receivers and Jalen Polk if you really wanted to. But the market, people are saying, that's not me saying that. I did not make that up. People are doing that. They're putting their money down on the line saying, hey, we think Jalen Polk's a good upside play. Maybe middle of the season, maybe later. We think he's going to have some good games this year. Maybe you should think about that for your traditional home league as an upside get on the cheap for your fantasy league. So you're not just looking at my analysis prior to this. You're looking at thousands of other people's analysis prior to this as well, giving you an idea from the S&P 500 of fantasy football that Jalen Polk is a stock that's on the rise that people are putting money on. You don't need him. You're stashing running backs instead. That makes sense. You got other upside wide receivers on your team. You can only handle so much, but you do want them. You love the talent, but you could also watch waivers because it might start off slow in this offense. There's other wide receivers being mixed in here. They're trying to figure things out. This team's retooling. If that happens, he might go to the waiver wire and you can pick him up as a stash for the rest of the season, no cost of a draft pick. You can pick them up, see what can happen over the next few weeks. The further we get into the season, the more likely he's going to break out. But he is an upside play. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on the next video.